Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the start of a new series that I'm calling DIY Bride. Just because with what's going on in the world, you might not have your hands on a makeup artist for your wedding, so you might be doing it yourself. So hopefully these videos give you a little bit of encouragement and a step-by-step -step process of how you can get some bridal looks. I used to do hair and makeup for weddings over four years and absolutely loved it. I feel like it really comes down to the individual and what they want. So I'm gonna try and do as many themes as possible, but I thought I would start off with the classic soft glam bride. So hopefully this is helpful. Let me know if you want to see a hair tutorial as well. It's not this one, but I can do a classic bridal hairstyle as well, if that's something you'd like to see. I do want to apologize for any background noise. We are renovating at the moment, so there's just a little bit of drilling going on, but hopefully that's not too consuming in the video. But without further ado, let's get into the makeup tutorial. Okay, I'm gonna take this headband. It's from an Irish brand called Aura. She makes these really beautiful custom headbands for brides and she even works with fabric if you want to use something like from your mom's dress or something like that and i just think they're really special and different so i'm just gonna use it for putting my makeup on we're gonna start off with base that is super important when it comes to bridal makeup just day of makeup it's gonna allow for everything to go on a lot nicer to blend better and to obviously stay on longer so we're gonna start off with this bobby brown extra bare glow it is an illuminating moisture bomb this is beautiful under foundation and especially if you're a little bit more you know dry or lacking moisture it's gonna really help even if you're oily it's just gonna help with an overall glow Next we have a primer. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter. I am impartial when it comes to primers, but this one I do actually like. I'm only taking a really small amount and I'm really just only keeping it in the areas that I get really oily. So that's basically my T-bone, my T-bone, <laughs> my T-zone. Also you wanna use a lip balm slash lip scrub. You don't want dry lips on your wedding day. So I'm gonna take this one from Dr. Papa and just put it all over my lips and we're gonna keep it on throughout the whole time until we actually get to the lip portion. Now, like I mentioned, I'm gonna take a translucent powder and I'm gonna press this in my T-zone. This is amazing if you have oily skin. I've shared this trick so many times before. It just really helps minimize the shine, helps keep your makeup on all day. I did this on my wedding day and it was a lifesaver. I had very minimal touch-ups, still got oily throughout the day because naturally who isn't if you're an oily skin girl <laughs> in a 12 hour day, but honestly it helped reduce it by so much and it also fills in your pores so it just allows for a more flawless cover with your foundation. This is definitely important and really comes down to the individual. It depends on the kind of finish you want, the texture, the longevity, and especially the skin type you personally have. So take all of that into consideration, being oily skin and having, you know, uneven skin tone from previous scars, but overall it's pretty good. I'm not trying to overdose it with coverage. I just really want a nice, even smooth base absolutely love this i wore it on my wedding day as well it is the estee lauder double wear and i have it in the shade wheat using it with a damp beauty sponge will give you a flawless finish really work it in don't forget right around your ears behind your ears your jawline and bring it down your neck you do not want to have a line especially in pictures only add more in places that you feel like need it you don't need to go a full two layers of this foundation over your entire face a sheer layer all over the entire face will be perfect Perfect. and then just a little bit of touch-up areas with a little bit more. Now I'm gonna go in with a cream bronzer. I'm doing layers just because I find if I layer a couple different things, cream then powder, it just helps longevity. And because this is a makeup look that has to last, you know, for a good 12 hours minimum, even longer depending on when you're getting married, because you want it to look as perfect as possible for as long as possible, especially for pictures, I think layers just really help no matter what kind of skin type you have. So I'm gonna be taking this cream bronzer. It's from Huda Beauty and it's in the shade Fair. You really don't wanna over contour on your wedding day. It's gonna look crazy at first, but we're gonna really buff this out because you don't wanna see any harsh lines in photos. Also, another massive tip is go a little heavier than you're used to. If you're used to very minimal makeup, like not even foundation, you're gonna want to wear just a little bit of foundation because pictures, if you're getting professional photos done for your wedding, really cancel out makeup. So wear what's still comfortable for you, but a little bit heavier 
than what you're used to. Also, I'm gonna do a little bit of light contouring on my nose. Nothing intense because I don't wanna see any harsh lines in photos, but I do wanna just give a little bit more structure to this nose. We're gonna move on to concealer. This concealer is amazing for lasting hours and hours and hours. This is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in the shade NW15. I could probably get away with NW20 to be fair, but we're going with this one. This is my winter shade, even though I have summer skin at the moment. I'm gonna take the smallest amount. This stuff is full coverage. So literally the tiniest dot ever. And I'm gonna press it in the inner corner, a little bit lower than that. Powder corner, a little bit down the bridge of my nose, tip of my nose, Cupid's bow, and then whatever's left on my fingers, because there will be stuff, I'm gonna put it on my beauty sponge, and then just go ahead and blend. Whatever excess is left from under our eyes, I'm just gonna place it right under our cream bronzer. I don't want a harsh line. If I wanted to really contour my face, I'd go in with a little bit of concealer underneath my cheekbone, but because I want it to be very soft, I'm just gonna take just a little bit with what was left. So as you can see, it's a nice bright finish, but it's not offensively bright, if that makes sense, especially because we haven't powdered yet and we haven't really blended in everything. I think it's just a really nice lifting look. I don't wanna leave too much time in between settings, so I'm gonna take my powder. Great alternative if you can't get your hands on the DMK one is the Laura Translucent Powder. That's what I wore on my wedding day and it works amazing. I actually just reordered another one because it is such a great translucent powder. I'm gonna just lightly put that under my eyes. I'm not gonna bake because I don't want extreme changes from like light to dark, but I am just gonna set so it stays nice and bright and minimal creasing. Now going on to our second layer of bronzer, I'm gonna take the Charlotte Tilbury one. This is the airbrush bronzer in two, medium. Really beautiful shade, nice neutral shade with no sheen in it. And I'm just going to buff that on the areas that we put the cream bronzer, really to act as a second layer, just so that it doesn't move. You don't have to do this, but I do feel like it aids in longevity of the makeup. Make sure it stays still, but if you feel like your skin is extremely dry and a powder on top of the cream is just too much. You can ignore this step, but for me and my skin type, it's key. You can just see how soft that looks. Like you're still getting dimension to your face. You're still getting a bronzy overall look and you're getting dimension without it being intense, like intense contour going on. But you can definitely see you got a nice cheekbone going on. And I feel like that's the perfect amount. Now moving on to blush. I just thought I would put on the one that I wore on my wedding day. I love it. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Chic to Chic Love Glow. It has a little bit of a sheen on the outer ring, but the inside's like a really pretty baby pink that is matte. I just like to swirl it and get a little bit of both. And then start at the top part of my cheekbone and really work it on to the apples on my cheek. I love this blush. I think it's a really classic pink color. I think it's really pretty and feminine and just gives you like that soft, perfect glow that you want on your wedding day. One thing I wanna say with blush is it is the first thing to fade, I know for me personally, on my face throughout the day. So this definitely needs to be in the touch-up makeup bag that you will have, <laughs> either your bridesmaid or someone holding for you. Keep your blush in it just because as soft and you know flushed as this is i would probably even go more than this like really make it intense because photos really cancel out blush and i feel like it naturally just kind of fades for some reason so i like to go just a little bit more again personal preference but if blush fades on you as well double up and also put it in your makeup touch-up bag this is literally the most beautiful highlighter it isn't necessarily, like it is a cream highlighter, but I feel like it moves into a powder highlighter once you put it on. So if you're oily, you're not gonna have to worry about this like slipping and sliding or your hair like, you know, attaching to your face if you have your hair down. It is beautiful. It is the MAC Shell Cream Color Base. There's just something so ethereal and just feminine and bridal to this specific cream, ba cream base, can't even talk. Absolutely love it. I'm just gonna show you rather than talking so much, but tip of the nose it has like a soft pink undertone in it. And oh my goodness, like even just on your nose, like you can just see where we're going with this. I'm gonna keep a little bit to put on my eyes once we've done all of our eye makeup, but just show you what it looks like on the high point. 
it just goes perfectly with this base and ooh, it is stunning. Alrighty, we are getting there. That is our base pretty much done. We're gonna move on to brows now. Totally up to you and the kind of style you want for your brows. I have mine microbladed, so I really just wanna fill in any sparse areas. And then I like to go over it with a brow gel just to make them look a little bit more spread out. But if you're really into like that laminated brow look, then go for that. Or if you just want a soft to fine brow, go for that. This is totally up to you. Brows really do frame the face and really do change the look. So play around with some different styles that you think will suit your wedding day makeup. Okay. All right, moving on to our eyes. I'm going to take this liquid cream eye base. It's the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Right AF. I'm going to put it mostly on my lid, but not bringing it up too high because all of our bright colors are going to be on our lid and the crease colors have a little bit more depth. Okay, the palette that we're going to play with today is this MAC Neutrals. I think it's called MAC Art Library Nude Model. It has a lot of great, pretty easy neutrals to work with. We're not doing anything crazy with this look. It really is just playing with a little bit of shadow and light and then a nice little smoked out liner. I'm going to take this skin tony color and we're going to put it in our crease, really work it in. It's going to be our background shade for the next color. Taking a smaller blending brush, I'm going to mix these two shades here. This one's definitely like a gray taupe and then this is like a neutral mid brown. I'm gonna mix them together and keep it on the outer corner of my eyes, kind of creating an outer V. Always keep a spare blending brush on hand to make sure nothing gets too harsh looking. Okay, you're gonna wanna step away before you get over blending and then it's just a big hot mess. I'm gonna go in with a nice angled brush now and some setting spray. This is the L'Oreal Infallible spreading, Setting Spray. I'm gonna spray this brush. I'm gonna go into this matte black shade here and I'm gonna press it in to my lash line. This is gonna really accentuate our lash line and it gives a little bit more definition. I feel like doing a harsh winged liner with a liquid liner can be a little intense, so this gives a little bit of definition and depth without being harsh. You can totally go in with a winged liner with like a liquid um, liner if you want, but this is my version of a little bit more of a soft glam look. I'm really happy with that. I feel like it's the perfect amount of definition I want. I'm gonna take a little bit of that brown shade right here that we put on the outer corner fused at the top and also just stamp it on my lower lash line just for a little bit of definition, but nothing really structured. I'm not even gonna blend it out with um, a blending brush. I just wanna have the tiniest bit underneath that's personal preference, but if you wanna go a little bit heavier underneath, go for it. When it comes to lashes, make sure you practice. I find the halves really easy just because the inner corner won't flip up. No matter the glue you use and the strength it is, I always find the inner corner of a full set of lashes always flips up and it is so annoying. So I always like to cut them in half, put them at the outer corners, and then I can always use a waterproof mascara to fill in my natural lashes in the inner corner just to even out the look. Make sure there's no glue showing. I'm just gonna go over over the lashes with the black shadow that I previously used. Now to brighten up the inner corner because I can't do a bridal, a classic bridal look without a bright inner corner. I'm gonna take the pearl shade in this palette and just swipe it across that inner corner and it just, you know, opens up the eyes and it looks really pretty whenever you blink. You kind of just get a little bit of glimmer to it. And then I'm gonna go in with the highlight that we put everywhere from MAC and pop it on top, mostly in that inner corner. All right, I think that's really pretty. I'm also just gonna add a little bit of this eyeliner. It's a eye bright pencil from Benefit and you pop it in the inner rim of your lower lash line and it really just brightens up your look. You can go one of two ways here. You can brighten it up with a pencil like this or you can darken it with a brown or a black. Again, personal preference. Lips are feeling a lot softer. I'm going to show you just a classic bridal lip that I would you know, suggest or lean to, but obviously this is again, a personal preference. I feel like I have to say that so much because this is very much like my interpretation of a classic soft glam bride. So when it comes to lips, I feel like a little bit darker than your usual everyday color is preferred, again, for camera reasons. My color that I wore on my wedding day was Mac Whirl. Obsessed with it and I think it's the perfect 
lip liner to really go with most soft pink shades or even nude, nude shades. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like on its own before you put the lipstick on. And you really don't wanna overline too much on your wedding day. Just like we didn't do intense contouring, you don't wanna do intense overlining as well because the camera that I'm sure is taking your photos is high quality. <laughs> you don't wanna see your liner like really over your natural lip line. So a little bit over is fine, but not too exaggerated. So this is a nice casing, weird description for lip liner, <laughs> but a nice casing for the lipstick that we're gonna use. I always do prefer a little bit of a liquid matte just as a base, you can get creative with your glosses or even a lipstick color on top, but just so you have, just like we layered everywhere else, you're gonna wanna layer on your lips as well because you're obviously gonna be kissing lots and you don't want it to come off on like just a couple of kisses. You want it to be there for most of the day. So a liquid lipstick, yes, it's drying, but that's why we prepped our lips. I'm just gonna pat it on ever so lightly so that you're getting the base of it. It's not gonna be overly drying and look crusty on your lips. And then you can get a little bit more specific with color and finish on top of that face. If you like this color, this is the L'Oreal Paris Intense Color. So one side is like a liquid lipstick, really soft pink nude. Other side is a bomb and it's in the shade 116 Beige to Stay. That is gonna dry completely matte you can kiss with it and there will be zero transfer so you can use the other side which is like the moisturizing balm if you want to stay with this color but i feel like we need a little bit of pink it's a little nude for me in my skin tone so i'm just going to add a little bit of the pink gloss i'm going to take this stila lip gloss it's in the shade casual friday and then to finish off a little bit of setting spray and that is it for this classic soft glam bridal look I hope you guys enjoyed and it was useful and hopefully you can follow along for your big day if you can't get your hands on a makeup artist. Remember, practice makes perfect. Make it your own. Do whatever feels comfortable for you and whatever makes you feel the most beautiful. And don't forget to enjoy your day. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.